the storekeeper think it's cool And then he smiles and for a while I'm in love Hi! Welcome to River Knitting Chronicles. I'm River also known as River Cameron on Ravelry. And I'm also now on Twitter. Um, my Twitter name is I am River Cameron. And if you want to follow me there, I'll be putting updates about the show and other things on there as well. So you're welcome to follow me on there. We also have a Ravelry group. We are up to 56 members, and I'm very excited about that. I'm enjoying the back and forth and, and the chatter. We've been a little quieter this week, and that's okay. That happens. It's been a holiday week for both us and the Canadians. For the Canadians, I hope you had a very happy Canada Day on the 1st. For us here in America, I hope you all had a great 4th of July. Ours was very, very wet. It's been raining for about a week, pretty much straight here. It's, it's raining again today. This was the first time ever that our city has canceled our 4th of July event, the big citywide celebration that happens in one of our big parks. And they set up in the morning, and by midday, uh, one of the vendors was interviewed, and he said that the, he had put an awning in front of his food truck so that people waiting in line could at least be shielded from the rain without having to carry their umbrella. And a big wind gust came, pulled up his whole awning, blew it around on people, and they just decided it was... It was too dangerous, there was too much going on, and weather-wise, and so they canceled and had everyone shut down. They did not postpone, it's just canceled. Where my husband works, the power went out for overnight, but luckily they have, he works for a large uh, grocery store chain, and they had generators, and so none of the food was spoiled or ruined, but he left work and the power was out. Um, he went to go get dropped off the next morning um, to go sorry, that's two in one sentence, to go back to work the next day, and the power was still out. Apparently, something happened with the transformer behind the building, and there was a fire, and so the weather's been wreaking a lot of havoc. I have some friends that I went to high school with who live in a place called Panama City Beach, you might have heard of. It's about an hour and a half or so from here, hour and a half, two-hour drive, and they have no power. Not power. They're flooded down there. Sorry, I I believe they have power, hopefully, but they're flooded, and my husband said that on the news he saw people in canoes canoeing down the streets in Panama City. So I hope that they are safe and and feeling okay. I've spoken with my friends online, and, and it seems like where they are, they're okay, but that, ten, that can happen. So I hope that it dries out soon. I kind of wanted a wet uh, summer, but... <laughs> Not this bad. I wish you didn't listen to me quite so well. So, moving along, uh, one of the members of our group had asked me to talk about some of the things that live on the set behind me. And so I'm going to pick one pile. I'm not going to do all of them in one show. But I'm going to do one pile at a time so you can see the things that I haven't talked about yet. And so I'm going to start with this pile here. These are my hats, and they actually live, right now they're on top of my yarn scale. If you don't have a yarn scale, when I first started knitting, I thought, well, how on earth would I need a kitchen, electronic kitchen scale for knitting? That doesn't make any sense. It's been so useful helping me figure out exactly how much yarn I have left, exactly how much further I have to go in things that I know it's so many yards, and... It's been great, and it was well worth the investment. I want to say that I got it on sale at Target. It was under 20 bucks, and I didn't want to get it because I thought, that's a skein of yarn. Most everything I measure in, could I have bought a skein of yarn for that cost? It was a skein of yarn, and I didn't want to, but I finally bit the bullet, and instead of having to guesstimate, I went ahead and got it, and it's been great. I've just loved having it. So totally advised if you don't have one yet, get yarn skein. Okay. So these are the hats that I've knit in my lifetime. This is the first hat I ever knit. And it was it was for the house cup. I want to say it was for Quidditch. It is called a, a Practical Animal Crackers Hat. And it is by Becca Evans. This one is a free pattern on Ravelry. It tends to run small because I was making it for me and it barely fits my son, 
But other than that, it's a great pattern. I want to say I did this a few months after it was in May of 2011, I believe. So I did this just a few months after learning how to knit, and I believe I used pretty much all Lion brand. I couldn't tell you the colors at this point because I didn't put them in my on the Ravelry project page. But it was my first color work and my first hat, and I keep going the wrong way. I think it turned out really great. It's got these wonderful little braidy edges and the braided little top thing. I think it's hilarious. If I do it again, I would definitely increase the number of repeats so that I could actually wear it for me. Um, but as it is, it looks adorable. If you look on my project page, my son is modeling it, and it's just the cutest thing ever. And so it is called a Practical Animal Crackers Hat. It was great for learning stranded knitting. It. I'm not easily intimidated, I guess, when it comes to knitting, because uh, this is a lot of colors and a lot of floats. Um, there's my floats. But I just said, okay, and I just did it. And it wasn't difficult at all. It was, uh, the charts were easy to read. The colors were easy to find. It There's a hat in, I can't remember which film, but uh, Rupert Grant, the actor who plays Ronald Weasley, wears it in one of the scenes. And he roars like a lion in it. And So, practical animal crackers hat. The next hat, it has the incredibly creative name of Number 11 Lace Beret. It actually is a pattern from, sorry, the having trouble with my charger, and I have a feeling I'm going to have to replace that soon, but Number 11 Lace Beret, and it is one of the very few things in my life I have knit from a magazine. I love knitting magazines, love, love, love knitting magazines. I buy them a lot. I very rarely actually knit the patterns I see in them. I buy them because I see patterns I want to knit, I see patterns that I like, I just rarely actually do it. But this is one of the few that I did. The mistake I made is I didn't use a stretchy bind off at all. Like notice, it's not going anywhere, and I can't get this on my head. I need to figure out, and I might take it to knitting group, some of my knitting group friends are on there, please tell me if you could help me if I brought it. I don't know how to rip out the bind off without completely ruining the edge of this hat or having it um, lose stitches and turn into a big old mess. But if there's got to be some way to get this bind off out and to do something stretchy so I could actually wear this hat because it's really pretty. I did it, it, okay, so it's the number 11 lace beret. It's by Deborah Newton and it was in Vogue Knitting Spring Summer 2011. The example in the magazine was knit in cotton, but I did this in Malabrigo Silky Merino DK. And what was really interesting about this hat is it had an incredibly different construction. It was not knit in the round. What you did is, or what I did, the pattern says, see if I can fix it so you can see it. There are these, so you, here's the, I'm trying to figure out how to show you this. Here's a, Okay, it came from here. Here's a sideways part. And then you knit the leaves going up, 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 up. And then you bound them off and you spun it to another sideways part. And you knit the leaves up. And you bound off and spun it. And then you knit up. So you knit it this way. And when you got to the end, there's just one seam here and then you picked up and knit the edging and bound off. And it was a bit, I don't care too much for picking up stitches, but it wasn't a lot at a time. There were a few times when I thought, this is never going to work out. This doesn't look anything like a hat. This doesn't look anything like a circle. But I love it. It's great. And I really wish, I knew when I was binding it off that this is too tight, but I... I'm one of those people, I was at the end of it, I was like, I just want to be done. I just want to be done. I'll figure it out. I just want to be done. I wish I'd have stopped myself and done a stretchier bind off. The pattern only said bind off. That's part of one of the things that I don't like about magazine patterns is to save space. They don't have really, really 
explicit, I guess, user error. I should have known to do a stretchy bind off, but I was a newer, in my defense, I was a newer knitter at the time, and so I really didn't, I realized as it was happening what was happening, but I didn't stop myself, but I wish that it had specified a bound off that was a little more stretchier. I did manage to get a plate in here to, it was funny, I managed to get a plate in here to block it, so you can see that it looks really big. I almost had to break the plate to get it out, and I very nearly did. It, it, <laughs> you wish I'd have been on camera then, because that was funny. But anyway, so it's number 11, Lace Beret by Deborah Newton from Vogue Knitting. Oh, that's a good way. You can see how they all spin around. And I moved again. So the way that the orientation of the leaves goes around in the circle... That's because you knit, it, you knit it around that. So you knit them, then you knit them, then you knit them that way. Okay. By Deborah Newton out of Vogue Knitting Magazine. Oh, and I completely... I'm going to save this hat because I forgot to put notes for this hat. So I'm going to put it in that pile. The next one I was going to talk about, and this is the hat that I wore the most often this winter, this past winter, and it is called Through the Woods, and it is by Kate Heppel, H-E-P-P-E-L-L. Hold it up just like that. If you can see that. This one is done more, focus. this one is done more traditionally. If I remember correctly, I started at the bottom, I did the ribbing, went up, decreased till I got to the top. This was my first hat like that, and so I had a little bit of trouble right here. At the. It looks fine, but when I was doing it, I felt a little lost and confused. I want to say I went down to DPNs, and I'm not very used to DPNs. I do my socks, magic loop, and things like that, and so I think having all of those needles sticking out, trying to poke into me, I think that was my problem, but it looks fine. I did it in Malabrigo worsted, as you can tell, so in places it's starting to felt on itself. But it's super cute. I really like it. The students loved it. They kept saying, when are you going to knit me a hat like that? And I kept saying, um, never. I'll teach you how to knit, but I'm not going to do it for you. And none took me up on that. I don't understand why. But anyway, it is called Through the Woods. It is by Kate Heppel. And even though it's a lace hat, it was really warm especially here in Florida when we don't get too terribly cold. Um, but it's really pretty, and I enjoyed it immensely and wore it a lot this past winter. The final one I want to talk about is it doesn't look at all like the pattern pictures do because it's a very different color choice that I made, but it is the Beaumont Tam by Jared Flood. And the ones on the pattern page are in red and white, so it looks very different. This hat won me one of those blue ribbons up there. I, I want to say it was in the other category. I don't think they had a hat category, but there were a lot of hats, and she said they might add an actual hat category for this upcoming year. But I won first place for this, and... If I were to make as beautiful as the yarn is, and I love if you can see from the sides what the colors did. This is actually out of Knit Picks Chroma in the fingering. And it was, I can't remember what the colorways were called, but it was the brown. And then this was one of those long color change colors, so it turned to orange as I got nearer to the top. My problem with it is that it's so... Chroma is so soft and squishy that it's got no, it just kind of hangs there. It's got, it's blocked just like the other hat, but instead of wanting to be in a blocked shape, it just kind of wants to go blah. That pattern comes with either this tam beret or with a more skull cappy kind of design to it. I wish... If I were to do it again with this yarn, I'd do the more skull cappy kind of thing. I think it has more ribbing and stuff like that to help 
give this a little bit more support because right now it's just really flimsy, flimsy, flimsy. It's not one that I wore very much. It's just, I don't know, it just seemed like, it just, it's pretty. I, I enjoyed knitting it. I, I really like this hat. I just, it's not one that I gravitated toward or the blue one I could throw it on and I kind of would always know what it would look like. The fact that it's so soft and smushy, I was worried that it would just not look right on. So that is this pile and that's pretty much all except for the one. I can't believe I left that hat off except for that one hat. That's pretty much all of the hats that I have completed. I've started a few others, but that's it. Um, so most of those patterns, with the exception of the Animal Crackers hat, those are all pay patterns. And I, I don't have a problem with paying for patterns. I'm not wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. I, I teach high school in a state with, with pretty low pay rates for teachers, and I'm seven years in, so I'm not pretty far up the pay scale. But I still really, I like that I can pay the person who made something for what they did. I like that immediacy of it. I like that intimacy of it. I like that I can pay that person and if I have a question, I can I can PM that person. I can write a message to them and they'll, I've never I rarely have to do that, but when I have, they've gotten back to me immediately or pretty close to it. I like that they can then see what I did with their work. My Harry Potter shawl, Steve Plummer, um, put it as one of the examples on the pattern page for other people to see so they can see what it looks like when they knit it up. I love that about, about our community and about the the immediacy of not having all of those people stuck in the middle. and I don't consider Ravelry to be stuck in the middle. I consider it more like a vehicle to help put two people together. I enjoy that I'm helping create and, and working in this great little mini economy that we've got here where you know we pay the the designer and they're designing so that they have money to buy yarn from the indie yarn dyer who's dying so they have money to buy patterns from the you know, like it all goes together and it, and we all support each other and it's and it's very immediate and very close there was this to keep the minimum the negative talk to a minimum I'm going to try to really truncate this but there was this man who came into Ravelry I don't know if you saw it it was one about six weeks ago or so, and he was he started a group with the description of all patterns should be free, and a lot of people went, huh? When I go onto Ravelry, it goes straight to that group page, so the reason I saw it was that it was, if you don't go to that page often, there are your groups listed, and then it'll show you the newest created groups. And so it was sitting there, newest created groups. And so I never did join his group, but I kept checking. And and he backtracked a lot and rewrote his group description multiple times. And he decided that, that we knitters weren't... It came across as we knitters didn't quite know what we were doing or how to do this. And he was going to come in and, and knitters buy cars and knitters get student loans. So he was going to put ads for those things on all the patterns so that they were all free. And then if a pattern was good, lots of people would download it so that you, everyone would make money off these ads. And we'd no longer be dealing one on, like, it was just, it didn't make a lot of sense. It it felt very disrespectful, and I tried to explain to him, because he he did not knit, he was not a knitter, but I tried to explain to him using terms I thought he would understand, and I said, it's, it's like, we would rather go to a farmer's market than go to Walmart. And it wasn't dissing Walmart, I go to Walmart a lot, but I don't deal with the people who bake the cookies and put them in the, in the packaging and label them Nabisco when I go to Walmart. Do you understand? I... I go to the farmer's market and I deal with the person who planted it and grew it and plucked it and picked it and sold it to me. Um, I buy a pattern from the designer who sat down and thought it through and I get to interact and, and have that immediacy, that intimacy of that relationship that you don't get at a big superstore like Walmart. And we, I don't, I personally don't think that knitters need that 
person in between, and I'm guessing he agreed because his whole thing was supposed to happen in June, and it is now July, and nothing has happened, and he seems to have abandoned ship. I, I do, I'll admit. I keep checking that group every once in a while to see if he's come back and, and tried to get back in our stuff. But anyway, so I, I appreciate designers. I don't buy a gazillion patterns. I'm not loaded, but I buy the, I buy patterns from designers that I really love and that I really appreciate. And I don't think I've ever bought a pattern where I was scratching my head and, and thought this wasn't worth my every pattern I've bought has been so worth my money. And so what I wanted to talk about and for our question of the week is if you could please go to the group and join the group or don't join the group, that's up to you. But share with us your favorite designers. And they could have all free patterns. They could have free and paid. That's that's their choice. I'm supporting them by knitting the free ones and the paid ones and raw rowing them on both occasions. But they could just design free. They could just design paid. But who really stands out to you as this is an amazing designer. They put together some amazing patterns. They're easy to read. They're easy to understand. They're accessible. They have they have a group or, or they check their, if you make a comment on the pattern page, they get back to you. You know, those really stand out, yay, for our community and for each other pattern designers. So what I want you to do is share yours, and I've already shared mine on, on this show, and I'll start the first post with that. That, of course, is Belly Button Knits, and I'm not going to take time to reshow those socks because I've shown them already, but her patterns are incredible. And if you've never knit a pair of socks in your life, I really think you could pick up her pattern and with a little bit of help get the whole thing done without a problem because they're that succinct. They're that well-written. So share with me and share with everyone else in the group, please. So we'll all have our quays, cues, quays. I call them quays, but I'm pretty sure it's cues. Grow by leaps and bounds with lots of new designers and lots of new favorite patterns. Okay. On to what I am knitting this week. And it's absolutely nothing you haven't seen before, but they are further along. I did work a little bit on my cowl. I hope that you can tell the difference. I think I need to get some of those locking stitch markers so that you guys can see that I actually have moved up some. Um, this is where we are, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but in case this is your first episode, I want you to get to see it. And again, I have done some work on it. It is called the Geyer Cowl. It is by Elizabeth Elliott. I am knitting it in Malabrigo, Silky Merino, in Smoke, and M. Moroso are the two colorways. I am knitting it on US 7s, which are 4.5 millimeters. I believe the pattern calls for a 6, but I'm a very tight knitter, so I almost always go up at least one, if not two, needle sizes. What will happen when I finish, and I'm very close to being done with the color work, very, very close. I'll have another brown border, and then I will knit the equivalent of another cowl, but it will barber pole stripe. Then that goes on the inside, and I seam the two edges together, so it is will become a reversible cowl. I don't really have a deadline for that. I'd like it finished by the 1st of September, or I'd like to finish it, I think, on the 1st of September. I can turn it in for detention at the Harry Potter House Cup if I do that. So it's got a long deadline from now. So that's one that if I'm kind of bored with what else I'm doing, I kind of pick up and work on. So that's the Geyer Cowl. This has gotten a lot of work. I'm all, I was hoping to be done with the one sock by today, but by the time I recorded today, but I, my sweater was calling me. So it's called the Lebowski or Lebowski, and it is a sock pattern by Star Athena. I'm going to try to hold it so there's the leg. I'm on the foot, and I have done the heel. Again, it's called Lebowski in honor of the movie The Big Lebowski. The pattern calls for you to slip. I have some ends to even to slip the stitches as you change the colors so you end up with this kind of seam. I like, I actually don't mind mine. 
Um, I'm a tight knitter, and so the slip stitches are pretty small, and it's more of a textural looking thing. I'll show you how my heel looks on the inside. This was my first intarsia, and I don't think I did that bad. This camera is driving me crazy today. I did the very bottom through the tail feathers stranded because they were two stitches, two stitches, two stitches, and it just didn't make sense to try to do that many strings. Um, but there is, I'm glad I did the body of the eagle in Tarja. I think that that looks better. I am going to finish this sock. I don't think I'm going to do its mate. Um, it's too big. That's my fault. I went up a size and I did the large which called for an 80 stitch cast on because I normally do lacy socks so I thought well it's not going to stretch it's going to have color work so it's really not going to stretch I should go up a size just in case and that was the wrong choice and I don't know if it's just because of the size or because of my color choice but it just seems really masculine to me and I'm more of a girly girl I like lacy socks and things like that so I do think if you have a man in your life who likes you to knit him socks that this is a great great pattern for that um, talking to you Nicole from the hot ass knitter from the positive knitting podcast I've been trying to catch up on her and as Stu might be in the doghouse right now I don't know um, I am back November 17th was the last episode that I watched and I watched that a little bit earlier today as I was working on my sweater but I think if Stu's not in the doghouse that you should totally knit him these socks because I think he would love them it's really not that difficult of a pattern I love the striping of it and I love this yarn it's Malabrigo sock and Miss Babs cosmic and so what I think for me that I'm going to do, because I don't have enough yarn to do another full pair of something else, and if I did one of these in a smaller size, I'd still have one that was the wrong size. And eh. But I do like the way the red and white stripes are, so I think what I'm going to do is like some footies with what's left, like a blue cuff and then maybe blue heel and red and white stripes and then blue toes just for me and and I think I'll love them because the yarn is amazing but nothing against the pattern and lots of people made these in other colors and they look amazing just it's just not me I just I have discovered that I really prefer my socks to be lacy so anyway there's that and I'll have it finished for you by next week and I'll show it again and and Nicole can have Stu come and look and see if he would like a Lebowski pair of socks for his next socks. The thing that got the most work from me this week is my sweater. And look, it looks like clothes. Look, look, sleeves. Okay, so they're not sleeves, but they're the place where sleeves go. And... I'm doing the waist shaping right now. Uh, that's too close because it's so big I have to hold it back. <laughs> the pattern is called the Vodka Lemonade and it is by Thea Coleman. I am knitting it on Madeline Tosh DK in the colorway Tarte. And there's a really funny story about getting that yarn, but I'm running long today as it is, so I'm not going to tell it, but I'll maybe next week when I have time. I am knitting this on US 6s, which are 4.0, which means I'm pretty sure the pattern called for 5s. It's another very well, very well written pattern, lots of very clear, very explicit directions. She did a audio she was on the webs audio podcast june 28th i believe was the date and so i listened to that and kind of listened to her to explain her design ideas and all of that and and if you like audio podcasts and haven't heard that one um go give it a and like her designing go give it a listen it's not very long 15 i think maybe minutes so 
there is my sweater, and my plan is by next episode to be working on the sleeves. So that's my hope. But I'm very, very proud. And I very nearly wore it, but it's really hot in here, even with the air conditioner running. And without bright sun, it was still too... And it's this light, I think. In case you can't tell the difference, I have my curtains open. I have my lights on like normal in here, but it just wasn't enough. And so I was completely dark on this side. I looked like a Batman supervillain. So I got my table lamp that normally sits over there and... The best I could put it is right here, so I probably look a bit funkier than usual, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to see anything on this side or on this side of my face, so I wanted to be able to see. So, the only thing that's coming up, and I'm running a bit long, so there is a local event coming up. So if you are in Tallahassee or in the Tallahassee area, or will be coming this way in on July 20th, a different local yarn shop than the one, the Fiber Festival in November is being held by Really Knit Stuff. But on July 20th, Yarn Therapy, which is right on Thomasville Road, very close to Monroe, which is the main road that runs through Tallahassee, Yarn Therapy is running a Cascade Yarn Tasting. It's being hosted by Cascade. It runs from noon until 3. There are going to be refreshments. There are going to be door prizes. It's B-Y-O-N, which is bring your own needles. And you get to play with all of the Cascade yarns. All of the, Apparently they have some new bases and new things coming out. So that's going to be all set up. And you get to meet everyone. We have a really... We have four yarn shops. We have, to have a pretty big yarn community here in, in Tallahassee. So even you... Here, house cub ladies in Jacksonville, y'all can drive over and, and participate and have a good time. And I'd love to meet you, and and you get to see kind of what we have here in Tallahassee. And so that is July 20th, and I plan on going, and hopefully I can give you a full report. I might hold off that weekend and wait until I'm back, and so film a day later. We'll see about that. But so I will be there. And I hope to see you there, so July 20th at Yarn Therapy. And in the show notes, I will put a link to the Facebook event and to their group so you can check them out if you are relatively local but haven't, I think most people in Tallahassee who knit know where they are, but if you're on the outskirts or, or maybe right over the border in Georgia or something and haven't been there, you can kind of figure them out. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. We're a little bit long today, so thank you for your patience. The show notes live on the blog, which is riversknittingchronicles.com, which is pretty easy to remember. You can also watch these episodes on YouTube, and it's called Knitting Chronicles, but I think if you search Rivers Knitting Chronicles, you'll also get to the YouTube channel. I'm also on iTunes, Rivers Knitting Chronicles, on iTunes, so I'm searchable there, and all of the episodes are there. I'm, I have not been able to get episode one or two to work for me from iTunes, but I have not gotten any messages that it's been tough for anyone else, and I have an older computer, so I'm hoping that it's okay. If you're, having, if you're on iTunes and haven't been able to see episode one and two, go to the YouTube channel or go to the blog, and you can watch them there without any problems. I'm also on Twitter. Like I said earlier, I am River Cameron on Twitter, so you can follow me on there. And so that's how I'm reachable. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Bye. I have a crush on a boy named Samson. He doesn't know who I am and he's got thick brown hair, the eyes are staring to your son.